So now I want to talk to you about developmental readiness. And I think this is one of the most important things to learn when you're teaching your child to read. Developmental readiness is where a child reaches the point where they're actually ready to do something. So for example, in learning to walk, some kids learn to walk at six months, which is super early, but my nephew did that. My children did not learn to walk until a year. Some kids in one family, one child is crawling at six months. Another one doesn't start crawling till eight or nine months. They're developmentally ready when their body tells them they're ready. Um, so I'm going to give you a, a personal story from my own five children so that you understand the variety that you can have just in one family and the importance of waiting until they're ready. But before I do that, I want to tell you that when a child is first learning to read, it is so exciting. It is exciting. They're excited. You're excited. Please resist the urge to compare them to another child in the family or another friend that you might be homeschooling with or know of that is homeschooling. And here's why. Every child develops differently and it's important to see them for who they are and not put expectations on them that are unrealistic. Because the truth of the matter is, when they're grown, nobody remembers what month they learned to walk or what month they learned to crawl or what month they learned their letter sounds. Nobody knows and nobody cares except the mother. And so if that's not going to matter in the long run, it definitely shouldn't matter in the short run. What matters is that they're developing, they're developing. Okay. And so what we don't do is we don't push them beyond what they're capable of doing or be disappointed when they don't fulfill our expectations of where they should be. That being said, we don't just sit back and wait until they decide that they're ready to read before we do it. Some kids, I will tell you, are never ready. They never want to read. They never want to practice their sounds. So I'm proactive. I teach sounds. I teach reading readiness, beginning, middle, and ending sound. Everything I've taught you so far in this video, I teach them whether they want to or not. But what I don't do is I don't push them ahead of what they're capable of doing or be disappointed. So with that, let me tell you my story. My first son, um, I started teaching homeschooling him when he was in first grade. And he knew all of his letters by then, um, but he had not started learning how to read. And when I started with him, he was just steady. Everything I taught him, he learned at a decent clip. It wasn't like, you know, rocket ship or anything, but it was steady progress. He understood what he read. There were no problems. When he had to take his standardized testing, not a big deal. He did it just fine. Then I had my second son. And while he learned all of his letters, uh, reading did not come super easy to him. Now I've learned a lot since I taught my older boys how to read. So I would probably do things a little bit differently and use a little bit more tools that I have now. But I did the best I could and um, I didn't stop, okay? He didn't care for reading the first few years of his schooling and he was not a smooth reader. So while he could read any word I put in front of him, he knew his phonics, he knew how to sound out words, all of that was very solid, but he was not a smooth reader. So he'd skip his periods, he would skip words, he didn't track smoothly across the page like you should. And of course, being a new mom, um, a new teacher, I was like, oh, we gotta work hard, we gotta work hard. So we did, we worked extra hard. And we read and read and read. I read to them, they read to me. It was a lot of reading happening. But it wasn't until third grade, towards the beginning of third grade, that one day a man took off like a rocket and he never looked back. He's my fastest reader to this day. Um, so he became a phenomenal reader. That age, third grade, he was developmentally, something clicked and he took off. What I didn't do is I didn't wait. I didn't say, okay, you're not ready. So let's just, let's just play. Let's just read, I'll read you stories. Don't worry about it. No, 
I planted seeds every day. We practiced. I didn't push him extra hard, but we worked every day faithfully, planting those seeds, sounding out words, learning to recognize periods, learning to recognize question marks, saying with expression. We practiced, practiced, practiced. Very proactive. But one day, the light turned on and he took off. Then I get to my third child and he had an even harder time. He didn't take off till fourth grade. But again, I didn't decide, well, he's not developmentally ready, so I'll do nothing. I still practiced. I still planted those seeds. We still learned our sounds. We practiced. Fourth grade, he took off. He's an awesome reader today. Then I had my daughter who was reading at three years old. I do regret that for one reason. It took a toll on her eyes and I will probably talk about that at another time. Reading when they're younger, yes, they can, but they're still learning vision. Okay. They're still learning to see their eyes are still developing. And so focusing on things up close for any extended time for children takes a toll on their eyes. And she loved to read. I was getting my master's degree at the time. So she would sit next to me on the bed while I was working and she would do her reading while I'm writing my papers. And it was a bonding time. And then <laughs> come to find out her eyes weren't so great. Maybe she had some genetics thrown in there too, but the eye doctor assured me that probably reading early was not the best thing for her eyes, though it was amazing for her intellect. I think I would choose to wait if I had to do it all over. Regardless, she never struggled. She took off. I don't really remember doing much to teach her to read, but I'm sure I did something. And then I had my youngest son who I didn't let read until he was in kindergarten. I didn't even bother teaching him his sounds because I was worried about his eyes. So, but when I taught him, he took off like a rocket, never looked back. Until somewhere in the beginning of first grade, he hit a bumpy spot and his eyes were doing, they were not working together like they should. I did some simple eye exercises and got that back on track. And now here we are in November of his first grade year and he reads chapter books and he's doing awesome. So why do I tell you that? I had five kids. They all developed very differently. Some steady Bessie, some slow, some even slower, and some like a rocket. You may have the same experience with your family. You may have all struggling readers. You may have all whizzes that just take off like a rocket and never look back. Whatever you have, I urge you to be proactive, not to decide that because they don't like to read, because they don't like their letters, that you just hold off and decide, nah, we'll just wait until they're ready. Some kids, I will warn you, are never ready. They never want to. And you know what? They get to be in fifth, sixth, seventh grade. They still don't care to read. The fact of the matter is reading is the most important educational tool and skill that you can give your child for their education. As I said in the beginning of this entire video, when I read you those statistics, they're staggering statistics that you don't want them to get behind. So we plant those seeds, even if it means that they're not super fluent, even if it means they don't totally love it, a little every day, planting those seeds faithfully and consistently, because one day they take off. Now imagine if I had taken my two sons who struggled with reading and decided to wait. If I had waited till they were in third grade before they just magically, and it's not really magic, whatever makes it click in the brain that they were ready. If I had waited till then, then we would have just started learning how to read in third grade. They would have never caught up. However, I didn't wait. I planted every day faithfully. I didn't push them, but we planted. And one day, literally, it was one day for both of them. I looked at them and I was like, holy cow, look at you read. And they just took off. If I had not planted every single day, they would have just been sounding out words in third grade when their mind clicked and the light turned on for them. So I urge you be proactive with your children. Don't wait a little every day, faithfully and consistently. It will pay off.